Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. It is the blackest hearted, blackest minded, blackest man on social media signing black in and shining again, asking you to hit that share button because the message is more important than the messenger. I have said before what the solution for black people is. Actually, the one solution that contains many other smaller solutions. And I understand that many of you are going to say to me, well, how could that be a solution? I, I, the way I know is because when I put that in the title, the views go down. Not the comments. No, the views themselves. Some things I put out now have 500 views in less than 24 hours. But if I put the solution in the title, you won't believe it and it won't even get 100 views within 24 hours. Now, I'm going to talk more about that later on, but I'm just going to let you cats know something right quick. What I have said the solution is before. Um, you have every right to ask for some examples of the practical solutions within. And so therefore, I'm going to give one of them right now. You see. A thinking and productive man, a competent man, even just thinking stable men in environments where there is stability and instability offered in men, um, in environments that produce both bo produced both men and overgrown boys tend to get stared at as they get older, as the women get older, they tend to get stared at. <laughs> and that is because you have these women who themselves are somewhat productive. They're not necessarily thinking all the time, but they're productive and they outgrow the overgrown boys, which MOT is right about. That's not hard to do. It don't take nothing to overgrow them, outgrow them. So these women will start to see you, the thinking and stable man. And as the signs of your thought and your stability manifest more uh, in your business success, um, then they start paying more and more attention to you. With MOT wearing nice hats and pinstripe suits that are fitted, I'm pretty sure that he gets stares. Now, Darius M. mentioned seven secrets that women have. And one of them is that they actually want you to go to them and start conversations when they're staring. Now, they may want many men to stare at them, but they'll stare at the ones they want to come and start conversations with them. And what I'm going to tell you is that um, here is our solution. In the Muslim community, you may have some women that stare sometimes. I mean, they're going to be Muslim men that get stared at. That does happen. But they're not allowed to walk up and start flirting. Now, they can walk up and ask for the number to her father, her brother, some other Wali, then her number. How they can meet together and all discuss uh, what might make her happy. But just walking up and flirting, trying to get them a girlfriend and a hookup is not allowed for us. So practicing Muslim men, I'm not talking about the ones that don't practice. If he's willing to smoke weed with you on the weekends and he's willing to go to a club with you and he having some drinks, then he ain't practicing. Not at the time he's doing that. But I'm talking about the practicing ones, because remember, the solution is not just in what you say. It is also in what you do and don't do. It is a noun and a verb, in other words. You must claim it and you must practice it. No one's going to be perfect at it. But when you see someone that is actually practicing it, he's not allowed to walk up and flirt trying to get with, with the hookups and, and just trying to get the, you know, get the draws. See, that says something right there. The women understand, Muslim and non-Muslim, understand that if they want a Muslim man but he's not making approaches, they're going to have to approach him or send someone to approach him. And if they can't be coming trying to play games, it's marriage or not. They have to understand that. They're forced to understand this. When you are a Muslim man in the Muslim community and you are thinking and you are competent and stable, let alone productive, there are almost some communities to which you can go and you'll never get approached, ever. They do exist. But there are other communities to which you can go and you will get approached. They will hit you up. Not even necessarily by these women, <coughs> but by their fathers. Their fathers 
The brothers may be looking for a husband for their sister and their daughter, and they look at you. Now, if you were not Muslim and you feel that you can go up and approach them and start flirting, let me tell you what this does in a case like that. In, in environments where that is the case, the women stop at staring. They don't go beyond staring. They stare at you. They wait for you to walk up to them. They go, they stare at the next guy that catches their eye, that they want to approach them. But they're constantly staring, trying to get someone to come to them. Then when you go to them, the ball is in their court and they put up the front that they strong and independent, don't really need no man, so they're doing you a favor. You understand? Now, now you're dealing with something else. When you, when you don't go to them and you don't flirt with them because they're staring, you merely look back, make sure they're staring at you, Look a little bit confused as if to say, can I help you? Look down at your watch, look back, nod, and keep on going like you got stuff to do, because you do. When, that, when you start doing this, then they have to learn at this point, the ones that have something going on about themselves don't have time to come and flirt with me and play my little game. I'm going to have to go approach them if that's what I want. Or send a friend, but I'm going to have to go get them. You see, that's what's really going on. That's what's really happening. So you can take this and you can apply the solution from us. And you'll see. The thing is, Muslim men have been simply not making these approaches when they're practicing Muslim men. They've been simply not making these approaches just to date and hook up. Um, for religious reasons, but there's the practical benefit in it. Now, some of you would say, well, you know, man, that's, um, that doesn't sound very alpha. And it's true, it doesn't sound very alpha. But let me explain this to you. When, <laughs> when these women are trying to make you, some of you wait there's somebody else that they didn't make wait. That's the first thing we all know already. We've talked about this so many times. Yet and still they enjoy sex more than you do. If it's done right, if it's any good at all, they enjoy it more than you do. Likewise, um, they're putting a price on it just to get more out of it. In this case, there's now some sort of price for yours. And at the minimum, that price is cooperation or submission. Unless you agree to her paying the cost to be the boss and she pays the cost to be the boss. These are the prices. Which she, the minimum price is that she cannot come to you with both her hypergamy and her feminism. Because they're going to have to figure out something if they're going to make approaches to make these approaches successful. And what you're really saying is you can help me, you can be on my team and you can actually help me. Or you can help me at home or both. But what you can, what you're really saying is just one thing. It's not really hard for them to be. And that is, yeah, be attractive, be attractive to me. Don't even worry about the other men. Be attractive to me. I'm not going to judge you by how other men see you, like what you're going to do to me. So that's already easier for them. And then you're saying, in addition to being attractive, act like I'm attractive. Treat me like I'm worth something. And you can help me in my business or you can help me in my home, but you're going to help me somehow. And if I'm paying the cost to be the boss, then I'm the boss. You cooperate and you submit. You cooperate or submit, one of the two, whatever the case is. If I pay the cost, then I am the boss. All you're really saying is be consistent. Don't bring hypergamy and feminism to the table. That's what you're saying. But the only way that this is going to get through to them is when they don't have as easy a time getting approached. Now, take this solution that we've had. Apply that 
get back to me and tell me how that works. But you all got to be on code with this. This is something that's got to be across the board. If you are a thinking black man and you're merely, let's say, not even productive per se, like super successful, but just you're stable. If you are a thinking black man and you're stable, then go and tell other thinking black men who are stable the same thing. Because right now, the games that even the successful 92 octane women will play is based on the fact that they're getting approached when they simply stare at a man. And don't get it twisted. These 92 octane women, these 92 octane women are staring, okay? And they're, lo they're looking for the thinking and the competent man. Uh, they're looking for the grown man. But they still have been imprinted by the overgrown boys. And when they get what they want materially out of the grown man, they're still going to try to set it up with these overgrown boys from the past. Don't get it twisted. They're looking for you to fund their fornication fest. Still. So, and, and they feel they can do it because they're getting approached. They still get to sit back and get approached. And the major, the first mistake we have made is approaching them after they talked about being strong and independent and talking at feminism stuff. Equal rights. And I'm not talking about in terms of fights. Fist fights and violence. I'm just talking about in terms of everything. Equal rights means equal lefts. That's it. Equal promotions means equal setbacks. Let them come and make the approaches. Don't approach them. Not in the West. Because we've already seen they're not going to drop. Uh, they ain't going to drop the feminism. So make them drop some of the hypergamy. They're not going to drop the hypergamy. So you know what? Don't approach them. At the very least, have them approach you to increase your chances of being able to tell them you can drop the feminism or you can drop the hypergamy, but you can't keep both and bring them to me. Make them face the, uh, uh, the reality of what we go through, what we have been through trying to impress them. And even if these elders come to you, these boomers, and tell you, man, that nigga black mind stupid. He don't know what he's talking about. It's been this way for 150 million years. I tell them boomers, yeah, well, guess what? For 150 million years, the males have called the shots. That's what you tell them. You can also tell them that one of the species in which the dominance um, is inverted is the hyena. And ask them if we human beings... Um, are supposed to go the way of the hyena. Are we supposed to do that? And that since we got women trying to act like female hyenas, can male lions be compatible with female hyenas just by being lions? Make them understand that. See, the women want to act like hyenas like Kendra D was saying. And you got to be a male lion. I'm going to tell you what male lions do with female hyenas. They attack and kill them. And sometimes what they do is they attack. They will try to bite the back, paralyze the female hyena, and leave her to die slowly as a, as a message to the other hyenas. Do not mess with our lionesses when they make a kill. You wait until we finish eating if you want to eat from us. Or you go and make your own kills. But you are not going to harass the lionesses when they make a kill. If anyone's going to muscle them out of the first choices in dinner, it's going to be us because we're protecting the borders and because we can be killed doing so. But you're not going to come along laughing and cackling, harassing them when they make a kill. You wait till they're done eating. And they're done after we're finished. You wait until our cubs finish eating. And you get what's left if you're not going to make your own kills. This is what male lions do to female hyenas. That's what they do. If she's going to be above you, then you are a male hyena. And those are some of the most miserable males of all the mammals, to be honest with you. Even baboons have a very stressful life. They can tell by the cortisol levels in their blood that they're under stress a lot. 
But you know what? Even the male baboons are not dominated by the females. So take this practical benefit from what I've told you is the solution and see what it's like being a lion and no longer being a male hyena. Get back to me and tell me what it's like. Thank you for listening. The blackest minded, blackest hearted, blackest man signing black out. Asalaamu Alaikum and black male power just because these hyenas don't like it.